I'll address three broad points. Um, why is gender mainstreaming or gender sensitive approaches, why do they matter? Do we have some examples of them actually mattering? Um, is there a place for men and boys uh, in adopting a gender sensitive approach? And do is incidents of violence against women or other types of abuse, um, do they act as some um, type of um, indicator of um, human security in general in a particular place? So first, you know, why should African security actors care about gender mainstreaming? Um, why is it important? Well, first I want to start by saying that when we talk about um, having a gender perspective, it's not just about increasing the number of women. That's important too. And I'm glad to see that 40% of um, this group um, is women. But we're also talking about um, including women in decision-making um, positions. So the role that women play is important. We're also talking about understanding how women's experiences might provide a different perspective. So really understanding what, um, what experience women bring to a particular issue and whether or not that experience might lead you to a different conclusion about a gender situ uh, about a security situation. And um, thirdly, when you have information about how security challenges might be um, dependent on where you sit in a community, what role you play, how does that change what you do to address it? What actions or what revisions do you might you make in your security policies um, based on that? So when we talk about having a gender perspective, that's what we mean. It's not just increasing the number of women, but really understanding experiences and roles um, that might um, that women might um, might play. But why should we care about that? What does research tell us about including women? So today we're in 2023, 23 years post um, UN Resolution 1325, and um, just to make sure everyone's on the same page with that, UN Resolution 1325 was adopted by the UN Security Council in 2000. And it um, is one of um, 10 different resolutions that um, speak to um, the benefits uh, and the need to um, include women and gender at all levels of the conflict resolution um, process. Um, but what have we found since then? We found that um, when there are more female peacekeepers, um, for example, we find that there is a lower level of um, sexual violence in a peacekeeping operation. We find that increasing or including women at the peace table, including women in negotiations, actually leads to more durable peace. And I'll talk a little bit more about why that might be the case. We find that when you include women in peacekeeping operations, women have access to populations that their male counterparts might not. And I'll give an example of why that might be important. And we find that when we include women um, in security forces, they bring a different perspective and provide new insight into what might be causing a security challenge and how you might resolve that. So some examples. Um, I actually had an opportunity a couple of years ago to talk with um, one of the gender advisors at um, the UN mission in South Sudan. And I asked her that question, you know, what difference um, has, have women made um, or in integrating women in um, the UN mission there made? And she talked about um, how 
the UN mission um, in South Sudan, UNMIS, was able to change how women reported um, being victims of, se of sexual and gender-based violence. So before, they might go through a traditional system, a traditional process, and um, oftentimes the result was that the perpetrators might not be punished and the women might find themselves um, re-victimized, so more trauma. And so what UNMIS started to do was they um, have been working with the South Sudanese um, police force and have been encouraging women to go through the courts. And they've, according to um, the gender advisor, when women went through the more formal process, it was preferable because there was a, a, a determinate process. People knew what was going to happen next. Um, and um, there was more justice. Um, so by working with um, the South Sudanese um, police force and educating, um, educating them on how to deal with victims of domestic, domestic violence or other types of gender-based um, violence, how to, um, and including women in the, um, the peacekeeping force. There was a Rwandan all-female contingent, uh, for example. They were able to engage more women and that allowed women to come forth when they uh, fell victim to um, uh, gender-based um, violence. So including the number of women exposed how much violence was going on, but also allowed uh, a different process to take place where you where women were be, were able to get more um, get more justice. Um, there's some new research that showed that excluding women from the peace process um, in Mali, for example, was one factor in why the first Algiers, Algiers Accord might not have been accepted by the community. Women are connected to different networks on the ground and excluding women from a negotiating table also means you might be excluding whole communities that might need to buy into a peace process. Uh, just this week, actually, um, the US Institute of Peace um, featured a Ugandan activist named uh, Rabina uh, Rabinwa and um, she talked about how through her work with women, they're engaging youth and training them to um, understand electoral violence and how to mitigate that. So um, including women in these peace processes, not just what you might think of as conflict or war, but other kind of social upheaval might lead to including communities that need to buy into um, a process and sustain it. Um, so research tells us that women in the community might have effective liaisons with different different groups that um, all that that male counterparts um, might um, might not. We found that um, women might be more entrusted with more sensitive information. We have these examples from Liberia with the all-female um, police force in India. Um, we had um, similar examples in Darfur and and um, and Congo. Um, I had an um, an opportunity to talk with a gender advisor from uh, Monuc, oh, sorry, Monusco, which is the UN mission in Congo, and. Um, one of the things she told me was when she arrived on the job, they were not um, categorizing um, incidents of violence or casualties or fatalities by gender. And she asked them, um, asked the peacekeepers to do so. And what she was able to find was how men and women um, suffered differently, different types of violence. Uh, whereas previously they didn't have that information or it might have been anecdotal. And they were able to use that information to um, 
reconfigure how they went about their patrols or thought about security um, by understanding um, how many women might be victims, what type of violence um, they were facing. And similar, similarly, how men and boys were also experiencing violence. Um, which also uh, leads me to the, the second point, which is um, what is the role of um, men and boys in adopting a gender perspective? Certainly allyship, by that meaning um, the support of men and boys is necessary uh, for women to be able to be included. Um, but another thing that's important to realize is that when we talk about gender, it's not just women. So I think that sometimes you hear gender and you, and you hear women, but I would encourage you that when you hear gender to think about community um, because um, we find that um, men and women do experience um, different types of violence um, or might be subjected to different types of violence. So for example, if you look at uh, non-state armed groups. Um, men and boys might be more at risk to be um, recruited. Um, women might face different risks. Uh, sometimes we've seen, for example, uh, with Boko Haram, um, uh, they've used women as kind of surprise suicide bombers. So you might not be expecting women to play that role, um, but they've been um, recruited in that way. So yes, men and, men and boys have roles to play in terms of being supportive, but um, men and, and boys are not separate from this term called gender. We are all facing different, uh, different risks. And um, that is, you know, really kind of the ultimate goal when we're thinking about gender mainstreaming. Um, we're ad advocating to have women to be included because we realize that they are excluded at this point and excluding women means that you're not getting a full picture of the security challenge. But importantly, um, men and boys also face very specific risks and understanding um, what those are um, should help us devise um, security policies and approaches that would make communities effective, uh, as communities safe for everybody. Um, then, just uh, finally, just my last two last two points: um, Do patterns of um, violence against women say anything about? Um, uh, other patterns of uh, what we might think, what we might see in terms of human security or insecurity on the ground. And the research tells us that yes, um, countries that have high levels of violence against women um, are less likely to uh, comply with agreements or other international norms. Um, the larger the gap, um, between um, men and women in terms of all kinds of different um, social and economic um, factors, um, the more likely a country is to be involved in inter and interstate conflict. Um, so um, countries with higher levels of um, respect for human rights, and that includes respect for um, women's rights, and that includes less violence against women, are more peaceful and more secure. So we, we want to strive for that. Um, what can local security, what roles can security sector leaders play in strengthening their state's provisions of security um, for all citizens? Going back to um, the points that I said before, um, understanding that um, men and women experience different types of insecurity and crafting security policies and, and approaches um, to address those is important. Um, bringing women in at all levels of the decision-making process and the conflict resolution process is important, not just for equity reasons,
but also because women have networks and connections to different communities, have different experiences that contribute to durable peace.